All right, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, my brothers and sisters. It is good to be back. It is good to be on the other side. Uh, and uh, missed you guys. Missed everybody. Just an absolute, uh, absolutely incredible uh, week of healing, uh, discovery. Great, great human beings. Obviously, the the folks in in my new tribe, uh, Arrow, Aaron, she's a TGO member. Just an incredible week. Uh, we have a new chief medical officer for the foundation, Dr. Kristen Rosie Barnes. Uh, Rosie is a badass Tomcat pilot turned doctor, so an underachiever. Uh, man, it was just, it was incredible. We'll, we'll have a lot more to come on that. I'm still integrating. We'll be integrating for a while. Um, but we have just so much to, uh, to talk about. Um, hey, I'll do a, a, a hunter's brief tomorrow. Uh, got some new folks who were, uh, I guess, uh, kind of confused on stuff and everything like that. So let me, let's just knock out a, a brief tomorrow. I'll give you some Costa Rica stuff uh, tomorrow uh, as well, because we have a lot of trading stuff to talk about today. Let me give you this link again real quick. If you're interested in the hunters or the uh, lifetime, We'll go ahead and knock out a brief tomorrow morning. So there's the link on that. Uh, yeah, I, and it's cool because I love coming back and looking. You know, I, I snuck my phone every once in a while. It didn't sneak. I mean, on the two journey days and the discovery day, you, you turn in your phone, but kind of checked in uh, with what's going on. What it, It's just so weird being in the middle of Costa Rica, right? And then checking back in with UFO or, you know, balloons being shot down, uh, school shooting in Michigan, uh, which kind of dumped out of the news as quick as it uh, was in the news. Um, Ukraine, it was just kind of creepy checking in. I'm like, man, this world sucks. The world sucks. The world can be incredible, but checking back in, I was just like, man, it's brutal. Goose did a great job. Uh, was looking at the group me every once in a while. Goose is just an incredible instructor, great human being to begin with, but a, a great instructor. Looks like uh, you guys had a good time with Goose. Let's all send some uh, negative vibes to Goose so he retires from his airline job <laughs> so he can park the airplane and and start having fun because he's just a uh, he's he's a great dude and very smart. I love his take on the market and how he does stuff. So let's. Let's hope he gets done flying airplanes. Well, big airplanes soon because he needs to get his type rating in the L-39 so he can start flying around the No Fallen Heroes fighter jets, which would be uh, fantastic for me. Um, so, yeah, uh, why did I go on that little bit of a tangent? Because I come back and I'm looking at trudges that I had put on for when to cover a February shit show. And we'll talk about it in a couple minutes. What happened in February? A February shit show. We nailed it, folks. We briefed it. It happened. Look at it. So there's your, remember the beginning of the month, that short squeeze to start the month? And then what happened? That. <laughs> so there's your February shit show. Uh, it happened exactly as briefed. And it ain't over yet. We still got uh, a week left to go in February. And there's S&P 4000 easily uh, on the horizon. So very happy to get back from, uh, from uh you know, the middle of the jungle and look at positions going, yep. And hopefully, well, we'll talk about it, but hopefully folks stayed in those and didn't prematurely eject. I mean, they were, we still have some March ones, like a March 7th we'll look at, but those are all looking pretty good. Uh, other times I'm going to be away, obviously spring break. Uh, you guys know we head out to Aspen for spring break. So this will be uh, the 20th to the 24th. We're going weekend to weekend, but those will be the trading days. We'll see if Goose is around to uh, knock out some briefs. You know that I either do one out there or I do some videos, so I won't be out of touch. It's another plug to get in the Max Afterburner uh, group as well because I got my group me. I've been, I'm trading on a chairlift type of thing. Uh, and then finally, quick overnight to D.C. on March 7th and 8th. Uh, a lot of you know who Tim Ferriss is. Uh, me, Tim Ferriss. Uh, Jesse from Hero Heroic Hearts and another uh, guy. We're going up to Congress, Senate, uh, to brief uh, their senior most staffers, which is kind of a before you might 
be sitting in front of a long green table with TV camera brief. So it's, we're getting there. So flying up to DC to uh, be a part of uh, the change that's coming, man. There's just so much, you know, lion being in Costa Rica and going through this experience with Iboga this time, uh, not, not Ibogaine, um, so many differences. Like I said, well, I'll do a standalone debrief and all that stuff. You guys know how I operate. I'm still, I'm still, uh, and you know, coming back from that and jumping right into the fire, right? My son, Jack had a hockey tournament this weekend. So at hockey games, I uh, picked up my mom two nights ago. She's staying with us for a couple of weeks. Cheerleading's got, cheer- got cheerleading. I leave Thursday night with Jack to go to CU Boulder for a new student orientation this weekend as Susie takes Keeley to cheerleading in Atlanta or Charlotte or something. So, you know, it's, uh, I'm still, I'm still processing stuff. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you a full, uh, full debrief, but there's the tribe, obviously Susie, that's Dr. Uh, Kristen Barnes, call sign Rosie. Uh, there's our director of medicine, uh, operations. Um, and Nicole and their and their Smurf. Uh, you want to talk about integration? Smurf left Costa Rica straight for Dubai, and then he's going to Egypt. Make sure you follow Smurf's Instagram. He's doing seven continents, or he missed two. He's with this group that's doing like seven continents and seven. I forget what the name of it is, but he's skydiving into the Great Pyramids. When they get to Egypt, he's just, I'm like, dude, talk about an integration, man. So Smurf's on the road, traveling around the world to, to do some good shit. And then obviously there's Arrow, badass F-15E Strike Eagle uh, lady who just had a, uh, she, she's in it. She's integrating. Uh, and down the road, I'll have her on a podcast or maybe on one of our briefs uh, to share everything. So we'll get Smurf, we'll get Kristen and uh, more, more stuff to come. But again, just a incredible week of healing. Uh, Awaken your soul is beautiful. What a, you know, middle of the jungle, Costa Rica. We went to the beach one day. It was pretty interesting seeing a warning sign for crocodiles, not sharks in the ocean, crocodiles. That was a little, that was a little weird. Um, you know, yeah, exactly. Eric. Uh, you know, there, there's your, there's your single seat jet <laughs> for when you do your journey. I was down here in this one. I had a courtside view of the, uh, of, of the, of the lagoon and it was awesome. So good stuff. Like I said, we'll do a, uh, we'll do a separate, uh, separate debrief, just incredible human beings and incredible, uh, amount of healing, uh, down there. Aaron made this rock. She painted this rock. Just what an incredible artist. So there's our no fallen heroes wings. Uh, all our call signs down there of, of everybody who was there. So good stuff. But like I said, I'll do a, I'll do a separate, uh, separate brief on that stuff. So, uh, so uh, yeah, no, David. Yeah. These are, so these are staff briefings, right? Tim Ferriss, you guys should all know who Tim Ferriss is. He's a big dude. So we're going up to brief uh, staff. And then that, like I said, that preps the battlefield for a bigger hearing or something like that. I don't know. I, I really don't, you guys know me. I'm not a DC creature. I'm not a swamp creature. Uh, you guys know my mantra. We're going to start healing Americans in America starting in April. Our next No Fallen Heroes retreat is going to be in the United States. What a concept. Why don't we heal Americans in America? Wow. Brilliant. It ain't brilliant. It's the way we should be doing it. This is going to come from we the people. It's not going to come from Congress or the Senate or the VA. It's going to come from their voters, their constituency pushing this stuff up. So uh, I'm going to go do it my best. Uh, Christina, I don't know if I'm going to go up to Oregon since we have Dr. Since Rosie is going to be our chief medical officer for this foundation. She lives in Seattle. She lives in Washington. She has her practice up there. So Bart down in San Diego and we got uh, Rosie up in the Northwest. So I think Bart and and uh, Doc are gonna take the West Coast. I don't. I don't think I need to uh, uh, haul up there. So this would be uh, awesome. Yeah, Christina, I, absolutely. I can make an intro to to Rosie for you. Okay. Kind of delaying my start here because I want to see how keep how SPX just keeps going here, which is fantastic. Uh, 
there's your dead bat bounce and and we're we're heading we're heading lower that's amazon but it looks like the spx obviously um there's your dead bat bounce you know we're we're heading lower uh nope charles i shaved when i got back my brother yeah well just new cleaner look feel good uh that's not to say when i get out to colorado plus when you're trying to hide from the man you got to keep changing your looks right when i'm hiding from uncle sam uh plus my mom doesn't like it and my mom's here for two weeks apparently my mom was took issue with this uh, with my brother and my sisters and i heard on the back radio so i shaved and she's quite happy happy er all right here we go um the world's ending worlds we're we're in we're in world war three uh i I'm, I'm not even gonna waste too much time on the balloon bullshit uh it was a it, it was an absolute shit show in the united states they were hoping you didn't see it or you didn't hear about it right until pilots or people in montana are like what's floating over our state oh that they knew about it they let it fly completely across the country then they shoot it down <clears throat> then when i'm down in costa rica i hear about Three other balloons, and they blow those out of the sky, including a $12.50 balloon from some science club in, like, Chicago or whatever. This is the Biden administration. They, 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 get, punched, <clears throat> they get punched in the face, and then their knee-jerk reaction is stupid. Abbey Gate, Afghanistan. <clears throat> Hey, if you're an American in Afghanistan, get to the airport by this time and this date or you're left behind. What? Is is this a joke? <laughs> no, the last plane out is at this time. And oh, by the way, all the Taliban know that you're probably an American and you have to get to this gate. and You'll probably be kidnapped and killed. But good luck. What happened? Boom. Eleven soldiers, a Marine and a Navy corpsman killed. That can't stand. Drone strike, a car with seven children in it. I love Kamala Harris in Poland. Vladimir Putin committed war crimes. Might be the case. So did you. When you kill seven innocent children and three adults in a drone strike, it's a war crime. No, when we do things like that, it's the fog of war. Oh, okay. So then they launch F-16s, F-22s. Now we're blasting, you know, kids' weather balloons out of the sky. It's embarrassing. North Korea, ICBM. Boom. There we go. Um, <clears throat> Iran said to be on the cusp of the ability to make nukes, having enriched uranium to 84%. Purity. I think the last time I said the words Iran and nuke, it was about 60. There goes the S&P 500. As I said, first thing this morning. Four. There you go. Looks like the market peaked first week of February and the shit show happened is briefed with more to go. SPX 4K in sight. Maybe even today we'll hit 4K. So. Ladies and gentlemen, again, Benjamin Netanyahu doesn't give a shit about Ukraine. Benjamin Netanyahu doesn't give a, a shit about our live trade brief today. He doesn't care about PMIs. He doesn't care about Home Depot, shitty earnings and bad outlook. They care about survival. North Korea launching ICBMs. Israel will attack Iran to prevent them from getting a nuke. We've been doing it for years the Stuxnet virus, the blowing scientists up, the everything. But Israel, all along the way, has said what? We, this is only, it's not a matter of if, but when. We can only kill as many of these scientists. We can only virus their computers. It's, they're going to evolve. This is going to boil down to hitting each other in the head with rocks. What warfare has always come down to. It's not drone versus drone or whatever. It's dude killing dude. Israel, Iran will have a major war very soon. I got it wrong years ago. Why? Because Netanyahu kind of believed Obama. Remember that? Don't, don't, 
Don't attack right before my election. You wait, I'll give you the bunker busting shit that you need. All right, dude. Re-election, where's our bombs? I didn't say that. Lowest point in Israeli-U.S. relations like in decades. Then Trump came in talking really tough. Attack, uh, the, the shit that Trump did with Iran. He killed General Soleimani. That's a war crime. The world's number one terrorist who killed 608 soldiers and Marines. We're sad that he died, said Democrats. Democrats said no problem with Barack Hussein Obama drone striking U.S. citizens. The, the commander in chief of the United States executed. I think they deserved it, but constitutional whiz is like, woo. Democrats at the time, that's that's a just, that's just. Donald Trump kills General Soleiman. It's a war crime and he needs to be impeached. This is coming, folks. War with Israel and Iran. It's already happening, but like bigger war. Again, VIX it, whatever, S&P up here. Somebody tell me what happens when this one breaks out. What happens to oil when the Strait of Hormuz is closed by Iran, when they string a shitload of mines through there? This is why I'm here. Pick up your binoculars, put your radar downrange, and start looking. Strategic, operational, tactical. Uh, we are in... World War III. We committed an act of war. Everybody remembers why the Japs attacked Pearl Harbor or the Germans, if you watch Animal House. Oil. Oil embargo by FDR. What did we do? We blew up the Nord Stream pipeline. Former rear Admiral Kirby, national security spokesman or White House spokesman, I can't tell. Uh, nothing. We had nothing to do with this. Do you believe Seymour Hirsch, a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who does investigative journalism and maps it out step by step? Sources. Well, those unnamed sources we don't trust, but all the ones we've used for the past couple of years, you have to believe. Oh, OK. So we are in the middle of World War Three. It's already started. The Archduke Ferdinand moment has already happened. Putin's speech today or last night, whenever it was, Russia, out of the nuke deal. Fantastic. Then, Secretary, he's such an embarrassment, Anthony Blinken. Do you remember two years ago, the Chinese delegation came to a meeting in Alaska. Secretary Blinken tried to play the, the little tough guy, and the Chinese Wu-Tang Clan dude, whatever his name was, Smacked him down. Don't you talk to me about human rights with your Black Lives Matter. And uh, he it was perfect. He took a page right out of the DNC manual and read it to Anthony Blinken. And the dude was sitting there speechless. Why do I bring this up? Because they just met again wherever they were. And the guy smacked the shit out of him again. And they also said, what? We're, we haven't been giving arms to either side because we try and we're trying to be a peaceful whatever. Isn't that funny? He's like, you, United States, are making this war worse and all this shit. So come to think of it, since you guys are all doing this, what is wrong with us doing it? China's top diplomat went from smacking down Antony Blinken and went to Russia. Zelensky warns military alliance could spark World War III. No fucking shit. Here is the Seymour Hirsch article. This is uh, just... So they, and, and it's awesome. You look at what Biden was saying at the time. He said it. Biden's like, there will be no more Nord Stream pipeline. I mean, it's so funny. The SEALs went in from a Norwegian submarine. They planted this thing before the invasion. It's like this big time bomb, like three of them. Government specifications, by the way. I think they planted six of them. Four of them worked. There you go. Thanks, Raytheon or whoever. Anyway, folks, um, this is a game changer. Because if China 
allies itself with Russia, there will be a world war. And I do think that China is well aware of that. Donald Trump goes to East Palestine, Ohio. Joe Biden goes to Ukraine. Joe Biden flies to Ukraine to sprinkle money all over the place as people in Ohio are getting sick and vomiting and skin rashes and, oh, the water's safe. Come drink it. I'm going to Ukraine because Ukraine. North Korea, Iran, war in Europe. Which one of those is getting better? None of them. Which one of those can get horrifically worse? All of them. And it breaks my heart to talk like this. I posted an article yesterday from the New Yorker. Can psychedelics help heal Ukrainian veterans? Holy shit. It's like they heard us in Costa Rica. I talked about this. Our our buddy Doug DeStasso from No Fallen Heroes. There there's a this is really interesting. I want I, I want to read this text to you because I'm like Douglas. Where is it? Um so There you go. Can psychedelics help heal Ukrainians trauma? Just talking about this. Might take a little work since they are a bit reticent when it comes to plant meds during the conflict, but I'll ask my guys. And I said, uh, you would think they would listen to a bunch of dudes that have been fighting for 20 years in wars. And he said, you would think, but man, are those cultural norms powerful? especially after being ingrained in Soviet thought for so long. They fear open minds naturally. I saw Zelensky passed a law or an executive decree the other day that said, like, if you desert or you don't want to fight in Ukraine, it's like 15 years in prison. I mean, they are going full ape shit here in Ukraine. Um, you can't be a pacifist. So Doug's like, dude, I, you know, the guy he had initially talked to, a chief of staff or whatever, was like, great idea. but." He's like, the more that they think about it, they're like, "Eh, we don't, we're in the middle of a war. We can't have a guy like Wiz or Slider who does the medicine and goes, why the fuck are we killing each other? This is, uh, it's awful, guys. I I, I don't want to waste too much. It's not a waste of time. I don't want to spend too much more time on this because this is just, the Chinese start arming the Russians or, from what I've heard from some folks, you might see some, you might already be seeing some North Korean troops. You might start seeing, let's say Ukraine gets F-16s or MiG-29s from Poland. You might start seeing some Chinese J-20 aircraft, man. This is, this is awful. Uh, it breaks my heart. Stop killing each other. Stop it. Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, operationally, folks, uh, we talked about this, man. There's your rip your face off short squeeze. Never. I called this the entire time, didn't I? As this thing popped, I did several briefs. I did a, uh, a free brief with a bunch of other traders one day. I said, no, 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 no. So if you, if you held your trudges, you're doing pretty good right now, uh, which I'm very happy about. Quick reminder, your commit criteria. As to why we got in like this one. This was before I left, man. My last brief, I said what? 4,200, 4,250, which is looking really good. And then we did, I bought the 4,3950. Right? right? And you could have dog fought, dog fight, uh, a bunch of the stuff in between. Another reason you want to be in the hunters and all that type of stuff, we'll talk about separately. Um, but this is... we knew this was going to happen. First of all, short squeezes end. And this is, this is a perfect looking top, right? Look at the chop. This is all earnings chop. Okay. And now reality is starting to set in with the market. 
it was funny checking back in on my phone about seeing the market kind of going, holy shit, we think Jerome, I think the next, remember a month or two ago, it was like Jeffrey Gunlock. The Fed's got one more 25 in him and done. I'm like, what did I say? I'm like, that guy's wrong again. He, he and I haven't, I've been right ever since the election one. He's been wrong. $200 billion hedge fund manager. Okay. Not only is it not 25 and done, it's probably 50 on the next one, in my opinion. I saw some of you guys talking 25, 25, hold and wait and all sorts of stuff like that. I don't know, man. But the tail is starting to wag the dog. The tail being the market is trying to wag the Fed into believing that what? We can have a soft landing. These aren't the droids you're looking for. They're trying to do the Jedi mind trick to the Fed. And the Fed keeps doing the... We're, 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 we're doing our job this time. Listen to us. <laughs> no, you won't. So I think we have a lot more down to go. This is the third week in a row or three, it was three weeks in a row of a down market. And this is, you know, next stop 4,000 easily, like we talked about. And our treads are looking uh, pretty good. You got it, Barry. That is a classic. You, yeah, you just, let me, uh, what's my pen color here? Where's my red? There we go. That doesn't get any more bearish. And look at the 4,000, man. 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. That's, that we already broke out of the, the down. So there's your classic. I love when this, uh, when a plan comes together. The, uh, a reminder about commit criteria. Your trade plan, step one, two, three. Step three of your trade plan needs to be commit criteria. If any of you got out of your treads, um, first of all, that's on you, but is it because your commit criteria change? Every one of those treads that I did, I said, hey, man, between now and beginning at, uh, for January, and I briefed, fill in the blank, all of that shit happened. Not one of my commit criteria for getting into those treads changed. So I, uh, the beginning ones, uh, when we sold into this pop, I, I exited a couple of those, but the the other ones are solid and I'm holding them. Yeah, Charles, we can talk about that. Let me, let's finish our operational brief. Uh, a couple PMIs this morning. How did they look? Uh, a little hot. There's your flash services PMI and the manufacturing. Ooh. Hmm. Again, we've talked, look at that. We're trying that, that 40, 20, let's go look at SPX. You can be doing some snipes right now and doing some good work. The market ain't getting off the mat. Look at this, 40, 25. It was hovering, hovering, hovering. Now it's a slam. So 40, 50, tried to arrest the descent at 40, 25, and now there's a leg down. 4,000 is definitely in sight. Um. So we've talked about this previously, but it's kind of been confirmed. We have inflation is sticky. So when we get these inflation prints, you get the knee jerk reaction out of the market. And then we get into a brief and do what? This is horrible. Remember the day pre-market inflation was at 7.1% and the futures went up 800 points. And in the max afterburner, I'm like selling to this pop at the open. The market closed down 80 that day. It's starting to, we're starting to get, you know, I, and I saw over the weekend some Ukraine polls like 75%. And then now, you know, it's gone down to like 25% supporting this. They are losing the United States and our, and our, and our Zelensky or whoever is chief of staff the other day saying Ukrainian tanks will be in Moscow. Are you fucking insane? Now I, I I get it for the for the home front or propaganda purposes. It went from Joe Biden saying, "Of course we're not s sending them tanks, man," and then he went like this: "That would be World War Three. He went creepy Joe into the mic. That was in March. Now we're sending him tanks. We didn't want to send longer range missiles because if they reach into Russia, it's no longer they they invaded our home, so we're going to kick them out of our home. I love that. Yay! Here's some help. 
Like if somebody breaks into somebody else's house in the other side of my neighborhood, we I, I really got to I, I keep just sending shit. I, I just I, I don't get it. Now it's gone from I'm, I'm kicking the guy out of my house to I'm going to go invade his home. Whatever. I was talking about Ukrainian fatigue. What I'm getting at is inflation stickiness. Corporate America is starting to do what? I don't care what these PM, the, these, the CPI prints or the PPI prints come in as. I get the arc and it's peaked. Remember f- four or five months ago on, and you can see the chart. It peaked up here and they were celebrating in the White House and Jean-Claude Van Damme and Joe Biden. Inflation's peaked. Now where are we? Everybody's kind of like, dude, everything still sucks. Inflation is still raging. Housing market's imploding. Auto market, everything's kind of sucking. So, and Jimmy Carter analogy right now, you know, the malaise speech. There's a malaise in the market and America right now. Ain't no raging bull market right now, folks. Things are starting to set in that things are going to suck and suck for a while. And God bless Jimmy Carter in his final, uh, you know, days, hours on this planet. The best ex-president, shitty president, best ex-president. Just what a great second act out of Jimmy Carter. So God bless Jimmy Carter. Um, More auto payments are late, exposing cracks in what? Consumer credit. So not only is inflation raging and it's staying up here, not even close to the Fed's target of 2%. We're not even close. If the Fed wanted us to be down here, We'd need to be up around six, six and a half on the Fed funds rate. We're not close, guys. The Fed still has work to do. But as we've I've dr- drawn out here repeatedly in the white space, where is the market living or trying to live? It's not being present. It's out here in June or something. They're going to have to pivot and cut rates. Are you people insane? They are living out here waiting for the pause, pivot, and ignoring being present. The market has a problem with mindfulness today. And and that's what happens, folks, is every once in a while that this is reality. This type of shit is living out here. Did you see him in the press conference? He, you know, wasn't the the Jackson Hole pal. He didn't use the word pain. So that's bullish. What? He also said we have a ton of work to do and there's no way in hell we're pausing anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't. He wasn't Jackson Hole pal. Whatever. So housing, cracking, imploding. Again, I'm in South Florida. People are, everybody's a realtor down here and everybody's like, holy shit, things aren't good. Borrowers with low credit scores fall behind numbers unseen since when? Oh, shit. Home Depot misses revenue expectations for the first time since 2019. Folks, Home Depot is a barometer. If I say financials and transports tend to lead us in and out of bad, it's I need to add these in here. This is a this is a bellwether, man. It's the Saturday morning stock market forecast. Go hang out in a Home Depot parking lot Saturday and Sunday and you can get a temperature on stuff. It's the end. Their outlook wasn't super rosy. Home retailer uh, provided a muted outlook. Now Jim Cramer is going to have the guy. They're talking about it right now. Uh, Yeah. Strong labor demand, higher wages. Higher wages and sales growth slowing is what? Lower operating margin. We're, we demand a lot more money because inflation sucks. All right, well, shit. Or I can go get a job somewhere else. Okay, well, here's more money. And the parking lot's emptying out. Companies, folks, so again, it's the airlines. Let's hire p- pilots. Oh, we got to furlough a shitload of them. Let's furlough a shitload of them. We can't, we're canceling flights. This is where the businesses are right now. So this, this chop up here will not, I've said this before, but this chop will end. Look at that, all that up here, that indecision. Now you have a direction. I think I said that before I left. I said one of these weeks, which I you know, drew popcorn out here, I said, you can wait 
until, you know, you get the confirmation. So to Charles's question, can we get a new tread? Tredge? The answer is yeah. There's your confirmation. The trend is your friend. Don't fight the trend. Now we got a trend. And we are where? Way, way, way above moving averages up here. The 50, the 200, the 100. And haven't looked at this one in a while because it's kind of a lagging indicator. Hello, Mac D crossing kind of in a big way. Look it over here. Here's a crossing back here, and you got that. There's the level off, and then there's a crossing last week, and now you got that coming. So these are magnets, folks. What's the 50-day at 3980? Okay, so the current trudge uh, that you have on is looking fantastic. What is it? Or at least the, the bear call spread is obviously looking good. The 4200, 4250 is looking good. Uh, and then this one, this one is out to March 7th, folks. This, you know, so we got two weeks on this one with the 4,000 and the 3950 still to go. We're hovering right here at this 4025. Might get a bounce. Can't believe I'm going to say this, but we get a little strong 246 that's conformation. We might fill this gap. We might get a little bit of a run back up to here. So stand by on a sniper. Don't need 40 strikes. Let me just have one under the trigger in case we want to do it. That's about a $20 wide straddle. Let me do some something real quick. Today is the February 21st. I'd fire a um, maybe a maybe a 4,005, 4, 4,000. That's 23, 40, 50. Yep, look at that. So, yeah, I said 4,005. It's 4,006. Look at me. The Boga made me SMR tur 4,000. Ah, man, I should have fired it when I, when I said. A little bit more aggressive would be the 4010. I'll try and get a dollar twenty. I'm gonna do that one. Shit. The hell's going? Oh, my Amazon's eating up. I'd shoot this one right now, man. Forty ten, forty oh five. Let me switch portfolios. Let me go over to weekly options. And you're you're in the hunters. You get this one right away. So arrow for all the hunters in there. You lost arrow. Arrows over here in the lifetime now. Uh, trades only. Let me get out of the weekly or the primary brief here. We got to talk Amazon too. So get, give me a, might go a little longer. Hang on. E-Trade weekly options is 4,700. And this is all just tactical trading, man. There's nothing fundamental in these snipers. This is all intra, 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 not inter, in, intra. Intra is same day. Inter is between the days, right? Yeah. Walmart didn't look too shabby compared to Home Depot, but Walmart will is like roaches and Twinkies. It'll survive a nuclear explosion. All right, this is weekly options. I got cash in here. Thank you, Andrew. If you're, you know, if you're a little frosty, we you might see four thousand today, man. Be careful. Like let's let's go look at this real quick. Let, let me keep an eye on this. I think we're gonna get a little bit of a run off of here, but let me drop some lines in here. 40, 50, 40, 75, 40, 25. So we're gonna get some chop around this 40, 25, and it's gonna make a decision. It's either gonna bounce, we'll get a little bit of a run here. So let me keep the four thousand five. What's the one I just fired? It's in. It's a dollar fifty. That's still in my SOP, though, to be honest with you. So 
I'll do that 40 10. Potentially make, no, hang on. I'll get the dollar 40. Because you can see it right down here, like doing a little kiss and hover, kiss and hover. I'm going to try and get a dollar 40. There it is. 60. Ooh. I'll take that one. All right. Um, what else did I have up here? Now there's some veteran stuff for AR. We'll cover that later. No falling hero stuff. Let's go back to Charles's point. Or you know what? Let, let Hold on. Let me go back to Amazon. Amazon, um, we have good looking. We have our uh, synthetic. You know what? Let me go back to Amazon in the other portfolio. Solo is 2300 Because we're in a joint brief, so apologize for the little scattered. I want to have to be better disciplined about the aircraft type, which portfolio we're in. 2300 Let me make sure I have my synthetic stock one. Good looking month for Amazon, about twenty two grand. All right, so I have the, um, this is my current synthetic stock. Before I left, I had some short calls on. I had to uh, eject out of because Amazon had a nice little run down 2%. There you go. Look at that pop. Go, baby, go. Look at that on SPX. Uh, let's look at some short calls for Amazon. I don't know if I got filled. I was trying for that dollar forty-five. It might not have with this big bounce. I think it might have ran away from me. I'd lower. I, I'd go up five bucks because it looks like here. Instead of just rambling, let me show you what I'm looking at. Here's SPX. There you go. Boom. That's a nice, nice strong bounce there. That's a little bit more confirmation. There you go. Look at that run. Already making you money. Good to be back. Uh, to, 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 to. Let me look over here real quick. Amazon. Look at it. Look at this. <laughs> here is your textbook definition of Things don't like living between moving averages. Look at this. You remember when it was in between? We got the dip up and then the perfect hug. Look at it hugging the 100 day moving average for a month. Well, for three weeks, Amazon was on the, uh, the 100. It followed it down. I mean, and then look at that one pop up to the 200 just to feel it. There's your textbook definition of magnets. Magnet, magnet, now now a magnet. So I think Amazon's heading down to about 92. Um, let's get some short calls on first. Let's go take a look at the at the money straddle for Amazon for this week. We're at about 95 bucks. That's maybe $3 ish. For the at the money straddle. Look at that, three bucks. Maybe about 97. And I think I have five contracts. Synthetic stock is looking good too, man. This sits here in the background. Remember with synthetic stock, we're out a couple years, man. This is out to January of 2025. 2025, man. This thing is going to sit here and it's we're just going to build this green up. Build, build, build. Um, so let's do five. I'm going to sell five of the 97s. Sell five of the 97s. Bring in 400 bucks. Better than a stick in the eye. If you're aggressive, you do the 96. Aggressive calls would be the 96. We might do a bear call spread there. That's why for these, you know, with the, with the longer dated trades, maybe you do the more conservative, right? 
think a little bit more accelerated retirement. So let's sell these short calls against Amazon. You know, 400, what was it? 400 bucks a week is nothing to sneeze at folks, right? 400 times 52 trading weeks is 21 grand folks. Some people that's their social security annual payment. So 21 grand is nothing to sneeze at. It's a nice bringing that in consistently, right? New Amazon short calls versus sin stock. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let me hold on. Let me grab a screenshot of that for the replay page and a text alert. I just feel good too, man. I lost like 10 pounds because I wasn't eating steak, chicken, pasta, french fries, or pizza, salads, everything that, that I've never eaten better in my entire life. It was just great food, incredible human being. <laughs> exactly, Eric, it was the beard. When I shaved that thing the other day, it was a Lincoln-ish, man. It was, it was a lot. Little Sean Connery ish. Amazon metrics 221. Before I go, let's do. Oh, we got time. Let's do. Uh, I like an Amazon bear call spread for the week. A little bit more aggressive with a 96 ish. 97. We usually do 75 contracts with these. Oh, you know what? Shit, I can't do that since I already have short calls in there. This would be the uh, a bear call spread. Damn it. I can do it in a different account. Let me at least, so let me talk through this one. I would sell 75 of Friday's 96 calls. That's me saying Amazon's not above 97 by Friday. Buy the 97s as a hedge. Since I already sold short calls at the 97s, I can't do this trade in this account. So I should have done this one first. Let me grab a screenshot. This would be a new solo Amazon trade. We'll look at the metrics in a second here. Amazon bear call spread 221. Risk in five to make 25. Uh, and yes, maybe I would look to do an iron condor this week if it's if we're going to flop around in a range. I would get this one on now if you can because SPX is taking a little bit of a dump here. Amazon, fair call spread, 221 metric. All right, let me switch accounts since I can't do that in this one. That's the one I'll, I'll do this after we get out of here because I want to do a uh, the tredge, a new tredge. Let's go over to this account. Launch. SPX. Let me go back over here real quick. I had some levels, but that was before market open and we're lower than that. So 4,100, 4,150 easily. I cover about three weeks. Let's look at March 7th for now. March, uh, two weeks. March 7, 4,100. Sell the 4,100. 
by the 4150. Whoa. Two contracts. It's a higher price. It's a little north. So I'll, let me brief it. Sell two of two weeks out. There's some, let's just kind of step through commit criteria. Now you got momentum. Look at what we're doing, folks. We're doing the exact opposite. You see this? That short squeeze, one, two, three. We're doing the exact opposite. It's an M and M. There's your M, and that's bearish. That's a double top bearish. We're heading back down there. So there you go. Commit criteria: uh, war, 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 inflation, blah, blah, blah. I, I can copy paste all of it. So sell two of the March seventh, forty one hundred, buy the forty one fifty. You could look at twenty five dollar wide strikes, right? And you could do a little bit more, maybe. Maybe you do the three here, right? This one risks five to make 2,400. You're only doing 25 wide instead of 50. Uh, so we can go back doing the 25s. It's, it's just pilot and command. So you can do more contracts. Uh, same amount of kind of risk, but this is closer to my five. So let's do this one. I'll do this one. Sell three. 4100 4125 $8. Let's just talk about the eject right now. Double the credit you take in. If you take in eight, you maybe eject at 16, so you don't take the max loss, okay? It's just political science math. You double the credit uh, that you take in, okay? Risk in five to make 24. 70% probability using at the money volatility. And we know with a bear call spread, we make money three ways. There is the current price of SPX. It can go down. We make money. It stays. It hovers. It chops. We make money. It can even go up a little bit as long as it stays below our break even of 4108. So let me grab screenshots of this. File, save as. SPX 221. File save as SPX 221 metric. Oh, there's a big leg down on SPX. We'll see if we do get 4,000. We send this. So that's the bear call spread of a new trudge. And then we can look at the bear put spread. Good job with the push-ups, bro. Uh, if you already have one on Slick, this is the current one. This is the current one right here, the 4200, 4250, and the 403950. I wouldn't – it's up to you if you want to double up. Charles, a little bit ago, asked for a new tredge. So this is a new tredge. If you don't have one on or you're taking profits or something like that. So – uh, I would buy, I mean, the 4,000, look at this, 39.79. I, I was going to say 39.75. So let's look at bear put spread. Same expiration, 4,000. You buy that one and then you sell the lower strike, 39.75. Let's take a look at what three of them does. You know, you're 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 spending what you're bringing in with the credit spread, and maybe bringing in four. If you went a little lower, you might make more money. But the, this is a higher probability trade. Let's get this one on now, since we're kind of heading there right now, just in case. 
this is almost a tredge for the sniper shot that I just took because it's not a violent. We're doing a little, a little descent. So, uh, all right. There's your bear put spread for the tredge. Also three contracts. Buying the four thousand, selling the thirty nine seventy five. Again to Slick's point, SPX bear put spread two twenty one. If you already have the one on that's doing good now, it's awake, it's making money. You don't have to add. This was for Charles and folks who are like, hey man, can we get a new tredge? If you're in the one, the the other ones, you're you're looking really good last. Remember, because we sold those like into those pops. I'm like, yeah, we got the rest of the month to go, man. Bear put spread. 221M. All right. So there's the so new tredge. I put this over here in the weekly options, I think. Because the other one didn't have stuff. So here comes the bear put. I'll get this uh in an email alert out to everybody. So you have it, and then obviously I'll get it posted, and then on the replay page as well. All right. Any fills on those? Okay. Got filled on the put because SPX just turned a little bit here. I'm going to stay here on the bear call spread up around 810 because it looks like SPX is doing a little bit of a turn. So the debit spread obviously got filled because we turned a little bit. But it looks like looks like we're going to get a little bit might get a little bit of a turn here. So I'm going to hang there at uh, at 810. All right, Amazon short calls, Amazon bear call spread, new SPX tredge. That's a lot, but that's what I had in my system. Let me look at my notes. I think that's good, man. Good stuff. Like I said, uh, normal brief tomorrow is weekly options, but we'll do a, uh, I'll do a one o'clock, a little bit of Costa Rica, but mainly a, uh, for folks who are interested in finding out about the hunters and then obviously the discounted uh, lifetime deal to save 5,000 bucks still in a good mood after the, in a better mood than when I went down. So I was going to keep that open because I got some emails uh, of folks who didn't get it before I left. All right. I think I'm good, man. On time, on target. 11 o'clock on the dot. Uh, I think I'm good. Any other questions, concerns? Oh, by the ways, I got, we have more stuff we're going to, even though I just, we just did kind of some weekly options. I have other stuff we're going to talk about tomorrow. Energy, um, definitely not crypto. I'm still laughing at all the crypto stuff, but whatever. And that's good. Awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to get going. Let me, uh, Blast this stuff out via text, email, get the replay going, and we will, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll be good to go. Any other questions, either in the Max Afterburner or in the Hunters or in the Red Room, if you're not in either of those, and I'll ask her it. You bet, Ryan. Uh, glad to be back, man. Feel great. Absolutely fantastic. Just so much. There's so much goodness. This, this is the way. This is the way. Not for everybody, man. You can just go to you could just go to awaken your soul and not do plant medicine. I mean the food, the each activity from the breath work to the mindfulness to the sound healing, you could just go and do all that stuff and it'll completely uh give you a control alt delete. Doing the iboga uh completely completely different from the ibo game. Completely different. World apart. Oh, and a little bit of it. We'll talk more about this tomorrow. I uh, had a call last night with a studio. I believe in the good things coming. Our new producer was actually in Costa Rica for a Super Bowl party and actually came on Monday 
and got some footage of our spiritual bath and some great stuff. So I had a great call with a studio last night, and I will brief you on that tomorrow. So make sure you show up. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge. God bless. Fights on and namaste. I'll see you tomorrow.